Hello everyone. I wanted to describe why, what I'm looking for when you start working on your exercises for chapter 13. Beyond just making your parts, your assembly, and your drawings, I want you to start working on creating descriptions that when someone sees the drawing for your part they can look down at the title block and see uh, just at a glance some of the major dimensions of the part. So when you have your part done here you can go up to file properties and then fill out your description. So you can see on this one I got base plate and then it looks like a bunch of gibberish after that. Uh, it's not because you can see in the evaluated value that it has a two and a half, three, and a seven. What these are are actu the actual dimensions from the part. So if I go to right click on here, show feature dimensions, you can see those the seven, the two and a half, and the three. So to do that, all I did was let me delete all this. I go over, I'm going to go from smallest value to largest value. I'm going to click on two and a half and it pops that in there and then I'm going to type an X click on the next dimension another X and then the last dimension and then I always end up finishing my descriptions with a colon in case I ever want to put some more information past those major di dimensions so now as you can see we got a nice clean dimension that if I were to go and change this well, this dimensions this is what drives my part the two and a half so if I change this to three and generate now it's seven and a half if I go back to up to my description you can see it updated to seven and a half as you can see in my description here my dimensions are fractional to have that show up versus decimal like if I were to click on this point five here it's going to show up as point five zero in my description so having them in fractions looks a little nicer for your description so to do that instead of changing all the units for your drawing you can change individual dimensions to decimal or fraction so if I select this 0.5 here 1.5 here go over to the other tab and then decimal or fractions so I'm going to select fractions let's get some other options there uh, anyways that's good enough for that check there now if I ever selected that one point that one and a half, it'll show up as one and a half in my description. The other thing we're gonna work on is our part numbers. So when you hand off your files to your partner, they're gonna iterate on your files. When they do that, they're gonna have to create a new part number. So this is kind of what I'm looking for for our partner part numbering standard. We'll just start with wit then to zero and then it's going to be your chapter number so 13 exercise number in this case is the tutorial so I just put a zero and then what part you're working on in that uh, that exercise so in the tutorial the base plate was number number three and then the last part is a so when you make your initial part we'll call it a then when your partner comes in and makes the change to it they'll go B and if we ever made another change you'd C, D and so on and so forth so if you have any more questions on how you want to do that part number just ask me um, another thing I've been I did to my part template to kind of expedite showing our datum planes here is on the the part template now I have these unhidden by default and then I added this these buttons up here on our view heads up to add those I went to customize and then I went to commands these are all view commands so I scrolled down on the categories found view and then I just dragged and dropped one of these buttons in there so I could drag yeah, view dimension names actually yeah. A useful one so I'm gonna drag that up here pop it right there now the view dimension name thing I just threw in there is that width thing so turning that on and off you can see which dimensions you have labeled 
when you first start your assembly, you have to start with a, your base part. In this case, we have a base plate for your tutorial. And the book does tell you to do this, but if you're not careful, it's kind of easy to set your first part kind of off in the middle of nowhere, which is going to screw you up in the future because you're going to really want to use these front, top, right planes when you start bringing in other components. So if you can see here, when I'm coming kind of towards the origin of the assembly, it snaps into place. So that means it's going to be in relation with the front, top, right plane. You can start using those for your future components. Another way to do it is to come over to your model tree here and click on origin. Now that first part is where it needs to be so you can use your front top right planes on with your next components. Another thing I started doing um, let's go back in here edit part uh, no not edit part uh, mate as you can see, this the only mate on this part now is this lock, which it works if you know that this part's always just going to be right there, but it might just be kind of OCD about me that I don't like that and I want the fully constrained with the different planes so I know I can make adjustments in the future if I have to. Uh, but the th reason I even bring this up is when you're doing your mates here, this control panel pops up and it covers up your model tree you can drag down here and see that but it's still pretty small if you want you can actually drag this outside of, off the top of that and snap it to different locations I've been kinda of putting it over here it's kinda of nice now I can do my mates and select my planes I want to mate them to like I said you can pl place it where you want or if you do leave it in here you can drag this down so you can split with model tree and your control panel here uh, obviously this drops down here and that's useful but I kinda like it over here in its own space so there's uh, I can drag that back up there so just so you know you can do that another thing I found that could can be useful especially in more complex parts. This one's fairly simple so it's not really needed but it's still something you can do. Is Before you even put in a part is to use the layout. So if I start layout here let me turn my planes on apparently that, okay there it is. So with the layout you can start planning out your assembly so you can use the sketching tools like points and lines to say we know that fasteners are going to go here so we can put points or the let's see let's make that construction infinite length so we have a line here so when we bring in our fastener we can constrain the axis of the fastener right to this line we know that there's a, a piece that's going to come in up here so we can put that point there or line or whatever we're using dimension it so when we bring in that part we have this layout to quickly place where we want it um, if you have parts that aren't really mating surface to surface they have a they, have a distance this stuff can really expediate the process of assembling your assemblies so here's a fully assembled wheel assembly for your exercise and you can see I have a layout here on it, the sketch here. If I right click on here, I can go to layout and I can edit it. If I want to edit a specific part of the layout, so you can see this kind of lighter green here. If I double click on that, that gets into that sketch. 
I can modify this part of the layout and double click on that now I'm modifying that I believe if I just double click on well it looks like that actually does work so you also can just click on the planes to modify your that part of the layout so I had already assembled this in a different way so I'm gonna switch out say this bracket here so instead of I'll still use front top right when I can but you can see that the bottom of the bracket is below where tops at uh, that's about it for that one in terms of why I wouldn't want to necessarily I could still use top I would just do an offset but now that I got it on my layout I can go in there select my mates let me just blow out what I have here right click I guess just delete one at a time okay so now that parts completely undefined so I'm gonna want front to front that's good and then top now not top to top I got that on my layout I can click on that point and check mark that's good and then I want what's the last one here front to front oh so then the distance over here instead of putting a distance for right I can go right to that point I have on my layout now it's a point so it's gonna actually be able to rotate about it so we're gonna have to put in one more constraint and I can do a right parallel to right now it's fully constrained or maybe not Oh, because that bottom one's a point as well, so I believe. Let's see if it does this. Huh? Why is it still underdefined? I guess we could do top, parallel, top, check mark, check mark. Yeah. Oh, it's underdefined for the whole assembly. So that's fully defined now. I do the same thing for the other side of the bracket so now if this ever got if this wheel ever got wider I don't have to go in and edit the dimension for the bracket I just dimension it on the layout and it moves the brackets out so as you can see I'll put let's say 50 here and then regenerate it see that side moved out but because this one's still set to a mate a distance mate I'd have to go in there and edit that mate so it move out when I change this dimension uh, and the other th other thing is now it's completely independent from any other part so if I were to suppress or delete it I don't have to go in and redefine the mates on this part it's mated to that layout that we did that's always going to be part of our assembly <laughs>
and now from here you can change your dimensions to whatever your needs are uh, let's go extreme and I think you just click here and you see it regenerated to get back to that design table it's this button here there's tables design table right click edit table pops it back up and I'm not sure what this is asking but whatever okay and we can change our things back so with three dimensions you might as well just click and change them in the assembly here but if you have a much more complex part and you have hundreds and hundreds of dimensions instead of trying to hunt down where that dimension is you want to change you can use this design table to make those changes you can also throw these dimensions in to the drawing but it brings it back to the assembly you change it there and then it takes you then you have to go manually back to the drawing anyway so I don't there's as far as I can tell there's not much of an advantage of having it in the drawing the last thing I want to talk to you about today is when you start working on your exercise these are the three di dimensions that are going to impact your entire assembly your wheel height your wheel di diameter and your wheel width when you design your base plate here your brackets your wheel and your axle keep these three dimensions in mind so when you change that wheel diameter whatever part whatever that dimension impacts you have a way of quickly going into that part and changing that dimension so it'll match up with the rest of the assembly so I'll leave it to you to kinda come up with your design of your parts and try to make it as easy as possible for your partner when you hand it off to them good luck